Coming up in this video, I'll show you a simple Windows application that lets you quickly see if certain devices on your network are online or not. If you've got a home lab or work on a large network, you just might find this utility as useful as I do. I've got a home lab with several physical and virtual servers, but with energy prices being so high at the moment, it's really not economical to have those devices powered on all the time. So for me, it makes sense to turn on the devices as and when I want to use them. And for that, I use a Wacom LAN utility to turn them on remotely. But I often forget to turn devices off, or I might want to quickly see if a particular machine is powered on before attempting to connect to it. There are lots of IP scanners available, but these require you to enter an IP address or a range of IP addresses, and then do a scan which can take several minutes to complete. You also have to enter in the IP addresses every time you run the app. I know some of these IP scanners let you scan from a text file containing addresses or let you save addresses as favourites, but none of them seem to work that well or at least the way I want them to. You could of course just create a batch file that pings the devices of your choice, but that isn't a great solution as you would either end up with multiple command prompts covering the screen or you'd have to wait for each device to ping in turn from a single command prompt. I just wanted to quickly double click an icon and instantly see if specific devices are powered on or not. The app I've found is called Pinger and it does exactly what it says, it pings devices. If they respond then I know they're powered on and if they don't respond then they must be powered off. Or I've got a network problem preventing them from communicating on the network. But let's assume my network's working properly so if a device doesn't respond then I know it's powered off. What makes this app different from all the other IP scanners out there is that rather than scan an individual IP address or range of addresses that you have to enter manually every time you run the app, Pinger lets you create a list of specific IP addresses and will continuously ping each device in turn until you stop it. And it remembers the list so that you don't need to re-enter the IP addresses every time you run the app. So let's take a look at it in action. First of all, the easiest way to get Pinger is to go to a browser and search for Major Geeks Pinger. Major Geeks is a site that has links to lots of different software applications and utilities. I'll also leave a link to the developer's website where you can download it directly from there as well. It downloads as a zip file, so I'll go ahead and extract the installer, which is just a simple Windows installer file. I'll double click the installer and click next, accepting all of the default options. We then have a pinger icon on the desktop. When you run Pinger for the first time, you may be prompted to install the .NET framework if your PC doesn't already have it installed. If you get this message, you can just go ahead and click on download and install this feature, and it will automatically download and install .NET framework for you. And you can't skip this as it's a requirement for Pinger to work. So I'll go ahead and let that install. Now that's installed, let's go and run the app again, and this time it will open up to the Pinger window. It's a nice simple app that only has one feature, which is the address book. Initially, you'll just see one entry, which is the local host, the machine that you're actually on. This is just an example to help you with adding additional devices so that you know how to format the address book, which we'll take a look at in a second. Once you've added some of your own devices, you can remove the local host. After all, you know it's powered on because you're using it right now. So you'll want to go ahead and add some devices that you want to be able to ping. To do that, you click on File, then Address Book. To add a device, you start a new line and enter the IP address of the machine that you want to ping, followed by a name and a description, separated by commas. The name doesn't need to match the host name of the device. It's simply a name for you to be able to identify the machine that's being pinged. So I'll quickly add some more devices and then I'll click on save and close. We then need to click on refresh to reload the list of devices. We can then click on start and it will then ping each device in turn. There's a status tab on the right hand side. If a device responds to the ping, it will be highlighted in green. And if the device doesn't respond, then it's highlighted in red, which indicates the machine is powered off. And the device that is currently pinging will be highlighted in yellow. Once all the devices in the list have been pinged, it then starts pinging again from the top of the list. And it will just continue until you stop it. And for me, the best thing about this app is the address book. So every time you start the app, it automatically loads your list of devices. This means that you can quickly start the Pinger app and immediately see if your devices are online or not. You can also edit the list at any time or change the order in which the devices are pinged. As I work on a lot of devices, I'll install Pinger on all of them and it helps to keep a copy of your address book in a text file. 
and save that text file along with the Pinger installer file. That way, anytime you install Pinger on a new device, you can just copy and paste your devices into the address book. So that's it for this demo on Pinger. It's a really simple app that just does one thing, but it just does that one thing really well. Let me know in the comments if you found this app useful or if you use a different app for a similar thing. If so, let me know which one you use. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next demo.